Faraday tells us that moving a magnet near a conductor will create an EMF. So here we can make an AC current by having an electric motor to spin a magnet. As the magnet spins, one side will be north and then the other side which is south near the conductor and so create an AC current. The magnet is heralded onto the pulley and the pulley just pushed onto the electric motor spindle. So an AC current will be induced in any conductor which is near the rotating magnet. What I've done is connected up the motor to a DC power supply just to provide the electric current so that the magnet can be spun. Of course it can be spun any other way as well. Many schools have these electromagnets available. Now I'm going to connect up the terminals instead to a crow so that we can see the EMF that is produced. The EMF is going to be AC so we need to connect up to a crow. The crow will be connected up using some leads that we just connect up to the terminals of the horseshoe magnet. There we go, each side. There's a wire connecting up the two half. So there are the leads connecting up. It's going to go off to the crow. Now I need to plug the leads into the crow and I'm using a computer crow so I plug the leads into the microphone socket on the computer. Stand it up and set the magnet spinning and then I bring it near the electromagnet. Oh, I better turn the crow on first. There it is. Now the crow's recording. And we're able to bring it closer and as we bring it closer the size of the signal increases. We can tell that it's AC because it's going both sides of the zero line, positive and negative. So as we go closer and further away we get a change in the amplitude of the signal. We can also turn it around and spin it the other way. We get a different shape of signal but it's still basically an AC signal. And it's still basically true that how close we are to the solenoid determines the amplitude of the signal that's produced on the crow. Well, what if you don't have one of these electromagnets to act as your solenoid? Well, many schools will, instead of having one of these horseshoe electromagnets, have one of these solenoids with an iron core that goes in the middle. So you can take the iron core, make sure that it's put inside the coil and connect it up to the crow in exactly the same way. On this occasion we'll bring the spinning electromagnet right up close to that iron core in the middle. So the rotating magnetic field, here it is, we turn the magnet on, bring it in close and the rotating magnetic field produces an AC signal once again in the solenoid. As we bring it close or further away that determines the amplitude of the AC signal that's produced. This time the direction of the magnetic field rotation becomes more important. If we spin it this way the solenoid and iron bar is not really seeing much of a changing magnetic field so we need to do it this way so that it's rotating along the same direction as the axis of the solenoid along that direction. What if you haven't got one of these solenoids? Well, all it is is just a coil of copper wire. So here we could try it even without the iron bar in it. Just a coil of copper wire. And so when we spin the magnet near that coil of copper wire, near the solenoid, we still get an AC signal. So I'm going to get an iron bar and put a bit of copper wire around it and a few turns. We could have more turns then obviously we'd get a bigger EMF produced. But here we've just got a few turns there you see. It's enameled copper wire so it's all insulated and I'll connect up that onto the crow and we'll be able to see the EMF that's produced in that from the rotating magnet near it. So connect up the crow in the same way set the magnet to spin near the solenoid once again we get a signal. It's a different signal 
um, not as big either but still it works all we need to do is spin the magnet near a coil of wire and we get an AC signal being produced <laughs>